by this uh, whole industry just further and further and further and further. Yeah. And this is something which really uh, probably is something what power needs to experience as well. Yeah, I guess that pure focus on what you're trying to achieve, and again we heard this with earlier presentation, that within pharma there's maybe that tendency to get obsessed with shiny tech, what it could do and all that kind of stuff. But mm. you look at something like Formula One, is it going to make the car go quicker? Is a key part of it. It's, it's the only thing and uh, and uh, somehow it was also stunning, um, again, back in those days, uh, what the outside image probably didn't reflect the inside of, uh, of the business, but still it worked because it was driven by people, by personalities, and this is what you see as well. But if you just change, and uh, this is why I was referring uh, back to Chris uh, in the previous session, if you just change the people all over the place, you know, we're all getting alike, more and more, but not really different. Yeah. So, if we look at you know what you're doing now and how that experience has gone forward, you know, what are the key changes that you're seeing or you see within the commercial environment within your time with Starter? Um, what I see is that, um, or let me put it like this: when I came in, actually, I, I asked about comparisons of benchmarks or, or how to. How to how to uh, yeah how to how where are we with the business as such and my, the answer was we are very good and actually almost nobody is comparable to us right. because everybody is special we have special niches uh, clearly defined and we are good at this and that's the end of the world uh, for us this has dramatically changed and that's for sure um, I can say for for my own um, company now. We are connected to all the countries, we see outside, we look, uh, we bring in uh, people who have knowledge from different uh, other branches, uh, other industries, and this really contributes to, uh, to the business as such. In terms of the real commercial business, yes, it is very much looking the same uh, probably as some years before, but in a way it doesn't, and, uh, and it's very clear and um, tangible that it will change uh, definitely. We are still working uh, with a good part of our business and let's say in the part of the world where you are going to the doctors excessively and uh, do the real hardcore uh, um, pharma sales rep job yeah. and we are very good at this uh, but um, what we saw today and uh, yesterday and I can only agree that Dario put together a brilliant uh, bunch of um, people here, so thanks very much for this. Um, it will certainly impact our business uh, going forward and uh, we will more adopt to what's coming up. And you talked there about people coming in from outside for, and I think you know, it's probably fair to say that as an industry we like to think we're quite unique within pharma, but there are commonalities of process, there are things we can learn. And the previous panel talked about you know, a critical mass of poor people coming in from outside. Yep. So are there key things that you think you know, you've learned from other industries or that there are particular sectors where you're looking to get people in from because of, of what you can learn? Yeah. I think in the end it's uh, business, uh, in the principle it's, it's pretty much the same from a certain perspective. But um, I think what I learned more from even is um, to take things and just let it go. Be more precise. What uh, what we started with, probably I think about six, seven years ago, uh, we started to go into the sustainable uh, management um, thing. First, actually, just as a kind of yeah exercise, because I saw so many prices which we won. So I thought, okay, let's make it more structured. What it turns out now to be actually uh, because there's a a lot of talk about this patient-centric thing and if I still, actually too long already, probably also in the industry, but if I still look at this, I think still pharma doesn't know what the, uh, what the client is or what the patient is. Um, let's be fair, we are selling to the wholesalers, yep. um, we, are, we are trying to persuade the doctors and pharmacists and yes, there are patients as well. Um, it might be different for originators who are really developing with, uh, with these patients, but in the end they are not the ones who are paying. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we actually want to get paid for this, so we are focusing on the ones with the money. So, um, the sustainable management approach actually 
uh, as part of this, we also conduct stakeholder discussions. Um, we meet with the pharmacists, we meet with patients, uh, we meet with the doctors, we meet with completely different groups outside of this sphere as well. Uh, and we started like a couple of years ago with this. And uh, the insight from this was quite, quite unique actually. Uh, coming from, um, there was this uh, example uh, uh, earlier this morning about the syringes uh, which couldn't be operated by the people with the bigger hands or whatever. Right. Um, we had similar feedback from our packaging which is not really um, easy to use. You don't need necessarily new products, but sometimes packaging, sometimes the way you're bundling things is, is already fine. And now the next step by creating actually this, uh, and uh, the headline from the panel last, uh, from yesterday was but it's in the, uh, from, uh, from pill to care. So to, to really make a new approach on what will be the business model going forward for, uh, for pharma, that's certainly something where we need support. We are completely blind on this, let's be fair. Um, but uh, I see a lot of things that Last uh, last session from yesterday about from UPS. Okay, respect. Uh, uh, so where are we in this? What can we provide? How can we reach out? It's not about buying wholesalers and pharmacists, uh, pharmacies to have a, a vertical integration. It's about actually broadening the service and all, the, and by this becoming patient centric and having the sustainable approach uh, in our management which we had beforehand is actually helping us on this already uh, quite, uh, quite remarkably. Yeah, and I think your comment there about the, the feedback patient-centric view is quite interesting because, again, versus innovative branded pharma, you might expect that patient-centric and to be less important. Mm -hmm. But to your point, I guess it's not always about better medicines or that sort of real front-end innovation. It's about, is it accessible? You know, can people open the blister packs? Can they get into the bottle? And use the injection, whatever it might be. Yeah. Sometimes I think that also this. Uh, and I'm sorry to say this, I, I don't want to be offensive, but I think this uh, patient-centric uh, discussion is also a kind of camouflaging that in the end we are in the business. We want to make money. Uh, yes, we have a good thing on things because we are helping the patients. That's all fine, and this is this is good side of side of things. But in the end, we are a business, so it is just a kind of. For some, it's, uh, it's just a label, and I think um, by embracing this, bring it in, uh, you will actually make it really hardcore uh, yeah. support for the business itself. Yeah, no, it's something I enjoyed about the panel before this one, where you're right, we do tend to talk about patient centricity, and we use that as everything's about the patient. That's a really cool part of it, mm. but it's trying to balance what the patient needs, what the doctor needs, what the payers need, what yes, your yeah. investors need, and all those kind of different factors. Mm. So let's come back to, we, we touched on the kind of sales model, some of the changes that you've seen there. And it, it, it sort of, I laugh sometimes because I was, I was with some friends last week and we were talking about conversations we had 10 or 15 years ago. We were saying, well, are we still going to have a sales force in pharma in 10 years' time? And we seem to still be having yeah. those kind of conversations. So have you seen any real change in that side in your time? Do you see any change coming? Are we still going to have the same number of reps out there? Pretty much still have the same number of reps out there, yes. Probably not the same conversations in 10 years' time about. No, yeah, but uh, what I see now, and this is um, probably is not, um, it's not really linked to uh, how the sales reps are doing their job, but actually uh, when I came in also again, um, I said, okay, you guys are sales, so how can we support you, how can you be better? The standard question was always, if you need new products, uh, otherwise we can't do more, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then conversation ends. Nowadays, um, we have successfully um, worked on uh, getting down the silos within the company. Suddenly, marketing or sales is talking to uh, product development. Uh, at, uh, our sales director is attending production uh, meetings just to see what's going on and how to basically um, to assess what you can expect uh, in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three to be delivered. Yep. Because for the production guys it's the same whether the, the products will be delivered on the 30th of June or on the 5th of July, but for the sales guys it's dramatically different. Um, and uh, this kind of inner understanding, this kind of openness is a cultural change which I guess Pharma needs to go 
much more into it, uh, even more. But I also look at uh, um, postings from from other CEOs of big pharma companies, um, like like Novartis. They are talking about unbossing. I mean, it should be a natural cause of things uh, to be unbossy and to have a yeah. to have an open environment. But obviously, it's not. And by this, I think a lot of things are missed, and there's so much great potential within uh, our companies of ideas and uh, uh, what, how can we enrich things. Amazing. Yeah, and again, it's a, it's a topic I've heard in earlier sessions in this, this, this event, is the concept of let's get it right internally first, let's break down those silos, co-create internally before we start to think about that next. I think we don't have time to just work on one uh, in a consecutive manner, but sure. um, but working on both ends actually and really meaning it and not just following the buzzwords and labels. Which I also have to admit, especially when I do interviews, you know, I mean, you ask the questions about how you're collaborating with colleagues and so on, and you get all these kind of prefabricated answers, and you just know that this guy doesn't understand a bit what he's talking exactly. about. And I think this is particular still. Uh, in pharma and uh, in other, I mean, we are still earning good money, so uh, probably the pressure was not still high enough. Let's talk a little bit about you know where you see digital potentially impact your business, because again, digital is a buzzword. Everybody talks about digital, mm -hmm. but it's incredibly broad. Mm -hmm. And and you you know, digital for me covers customer engagement, what you're doing with multi-channel. It covers things like supply chain and operations, how you can make that slicker. It covers beyond the pill, it covers digital health. It's almost too broad for anybody to, to oversee all that. But do you see it having much of an impact on your business? Where within those areas? Uh, to be honest, uh, at this very moment, um, there, is, there is a start of uh, impact on this. Uh, if you talk about the commercial side, not as much as it should, could be. But uh, I said we are probably in a, a different sector also on this. Uh, and. Um, but in terms of production and supply chain, this is especially uh, something which uh, digitalization is already very much uh, uh, within. And uh, if you see also, uh, let's say, not only our supply chain from, from wherever it comes, but uh, then going forward to the pharmacies and the end users, to the FMD and uh, everything else, right. uh, really, this is, uh, this is something which could have been done way before. I saw this actually years ago, already ago. In the company flying around as a concept uh, to put trust in our medicine to the people um, because also we are uh, still actively uh, um, fighting against this falsified medicines but it has never been implemented because it's, right. it's a huge cost uh, let's be fair on this but um, this will be actually something where other things can blossom alongside it's almost the area for me of digital where it could have the most immediate impact. It makes me think of a conversation I had with Andre He, who's the, the head of digital at Sandals. Mm -hmm. And I went into that conversation expecting to talk about digital health and all these really cool out there things right now. About supply chain. How can we do something right now yeah. that has an immediate impact? I'm just keeping an eye on time and I wanted to offer the opportunity if there's questions from the audience. If anybody has any burning questions for Ronald while we're here. Any questions? You might not want to ask Paul also something because he's, I think, much more of an interest person. Than hey, you can ask either of us questions. <laughs> Anything? <coughs> so let's let's look sort of you know take a look forward, which is always good because we're never going to ask you back to justify what you've said and tell whether you're right or wrong. But you know, again, within your industry, if you look over the next five years, where do you see things heading with that commercial model? What do you see as the biggest change engine through? I think this. Uh, there, uh, what we, what we discussed uh, these days, but also what is uh, all uh, in, the, in the news. Uh, the, the little support of things which are enabling the sales uh, people to work better, they will come in. But um, ex especially also what has been said, there are just isolated solutions. And uh, to have an integrated approach on this is something which certainly needs to be the end game. But it's a killer, just put it as a first. Uh, we started or, or working on digital uh, um, years ago, and I had, we had a project running out, uh, uh, running on this, and then in the end we had some kind of solution, bombastic, really. I mean, uh, I saved this presentation, I'm sure, in a couple of years' time, uh, I have reason to pull it out, um, because it was 
fully integrated uh, produ uh, producers, wholesalers, doctors, uh, hospital patients, everything was connected. Super. Very much straightforward. Actually, not even that complicated. Uh, but too complicated to be uh, implemented. Yeah. If you're still uh, in some parts of, uh, of the hemisphere, especially on our marks, working uh, with pharmacists who are struggling to actually have a really working computer in the pharmacies, uh, right. doctors who tend not uh, to use the internet as much as we always assume them to. Um, there, is a, there is a disbalance obviously between Western and uh, Eastern countries in this. And, um, and so the implementation of, of this is merely impossible at this very moment. Uh, when we talked about this uh, solution which we had, uh, part of the business case was actually to provide to everybody uh, who we found a uh, key to this, uh, the, the infrastructure. But then also internet is probably nothing which is always uh, uh, available. And, uh, so it's, it's, there are different challenges. Um, very much looking forward to, uh, to go on this journey. And I think most of all, and this is beyond whatever uh, we have as IT uh, or uh, inter uh, other solutions uh, being available, is actually to have a team in place who is embracing such ideas right. and who is really pushing forward. Because I figured out as, as being the head of the company, uh, I can have as many ideas as I want, but if I can't sell them or if I can't put them in the brains of my people, um, there's nothing coming out of this. So uh, now I'm in a, in a luxury, luxurious uh, position to have really a team which is pushing me. So um, that is, uh, that's the start of uh, that's the start of the start which will lead us to uh, something better and for the patients for sure. So having a solution that's implementable rather than this vision that you can't really achieve. Yeah. You could probably sell that, by the way, to McKinsey for about two million pounds. Or Entirely. For them to resell it to us for 20 million pounds? Yeah. Um, but it, it makes me think of a conversation. We, we published something recently about uh, Matt Hancock, the UK Health Secretary, talking about we're going to bring AI into the NHS. <laughs> Somebody who worked in the NHS tweeted back and said, can we move off Windows 7 first, please? <laughs> which, is, which is a good colour grounding and, and reality check. So I know we're, we're out of time. I don't want to eat into the patient panel. So I guess just one last thing is, you know, based on your experience in coming in from outside, what you've seen, any advice you would give to other people that are coming in from outside the industry and what to expect? I think be, uh, be listening, be respectful, be dedicated, uh, and then by this build trust and uh, everything will work. This is how I figured out uh, it, it can work and in the end uh, the results will show. And it's, it's a good industry. I'm, I feel very comfortable here. But it's, uh, but it's a very special one in, in, in itself as well. Very good. Ronald, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Much Thank you.